Okay, I think I get it. Talking about uh, doing an oil crossover modification on this thing where you drill a hole here and there or there and run a crossover to from here to there and then plug off the passage that would lead the oil down there, which is, let's see if I can show it. I don't know if you can see it. The hole right there, you can kind of see, and it comes down and feeds the first main bearing right there. And then it comes up that hole and feeds the driver's side oil galley and all of those lifters here. But this oil galley does not feed any bearings. Uh, the passenger side oil galley is the only one that feeds any bearings. So it feeds number four bearing there, number three and number two, and the number one. Rear main bearing is fed more immediately off of the pump or more correctly, the filter before it even comes up and feeds this galley. So the question is, how in the heck does blocking off this passage and instead running a two from here to there where there's no main bearings on that on this side how is that supposed to protect these bearings from oil starvation and i think i get it the reason is all about oil velocity going down this this uh this channel this passenger side oil galley so the number five rear main bearing sees oil first. Um, so, so that bearing is fine. Um, it's also got a very big, uh, I don't know if you can see it, but it's got a very big passage to feed that bearing. The other ones are much smaller. So I, this hole is what's feeding the bearing. That larger hole is feeding the cam bearing. So that's not, not the thing. Anyway, um, back to here. So this is number eight cylinder uh, exhaust and intake lifter bores. Uh, so these two lifters see oil first. They are the first things to see oil flow and pressure um, once the oil comes up and feeds this galley. Right between here, which is where that bearing, the number four bearing is, inside this galley is where that hole is going to be bored out and go down to feed the number four bearing so and then it goes across these two lifters and then the number three bearing there then the these two lifters number two and then these two lifters and the number one then it comes up again and feeds all of those lifters not to mention that each bearing is also feeding the camshaft bearing all right so I reviewed some of the other YouTube videos that is talking about this to try to better understand or remember more accurately what they were saying where the failure actually occurs. And I think what they were saying is that it's the number four bearing that's, that gets starved of oil first. And then the number two and the number two and the number three and then the number two bearings. Um, it's like, okay, well, how is blocking this passage and running a crossover tube going to put more oil on those bearings first and the reason is velocity all of the oil flow with the exception of the rear main bearing and the rear bearing for the camshaft with the exception of those two all of the oil that feeds everything all the lifters and all the bearings is flowing past the number four bearing so that pipe effectively is only so big around so the, the velocity of that oil is going to be relatively fast and the further down the line that oil goes the slower that oil is going to go because the further down the line it goes the more it branches out to its bleed off points bleed off points such as the lifters and the other bearings and lifters and bearings so the slower the oil starts to go the pressure is remaining the same more or less down the galley um but you think of the velocity, well, that's, you got this main oil galley and a passage is intersecting it at 90 degrees. Think about how easy it is to blow air across a straw and suck up water through the straw. I think that's what's starving the bearing with oil 
is it the sheer velocity at a high enough RPM of how fast the oil is going at this point, at the very beginning of its travel, it's a high enough velocity that just skips right over that 90 degree passage and actually creates a enough of a pressure drop. It could even create a, a suction where, and theoretically, it could create a suction where it would actually start to try to pull oil from the bearing. I don't know if it would go to that extreme, but at the very least, I'm thinking it's creating enough of a pressure drop that it just doesn't get enough pressure into that bearing. And the same thing could be true, just not as quickly with the number three and then the number two, because it still has all these other bleed offs of creating enough flow, um, creating enough velocity across this first galley. So I think the reason why the crossover tube works is because instead of all of the oil having to go this far down the line before it, it feeds the other side of the galley, it uh, branches it off a little sooner. And if you could do it here, it would probably be better. It branches off sooner so that the oil past that branch off is actually traveling slower because it would only have the lifters and there to bleed off and blocking that off um, rest further restricts the flow on this side, pushing it all onto this side where there's no bearings to feed. So you're basically, it's just slowing down how quickly the oil, the oil flows down the line so that you don't get that Venturi effect or you don't get that pressure drop effect. Anyway, I think that's what's going on. Tell me what you think. I know what this cat thinks.